My name is Peter Albrechtsen. I'm the sound designer and one of the re-recording mixers of The Killing of Two Lovers, a film by director Robert Machoyan, which has been selected for Sundance 2020. Last year, Robert won the Director Award for his short film The Miners. The film is actually the third film I'm doing together with Robert. Already when he was writing the script, he wrote me and said, Peter, you have to do this film. So he was really thinking about sound when he was working on the script. And one of the early things we talked about was how to use sound as a storyteller in the film. And Robert didn't want to use any music for the film. The film is a family drama about a man called David and his wife, Nikki, who has these family issues and are trying to solve them and find a way to be a family together with all their kids. Because Robert really wanted the sound design to be a major part of the storytelling in the film and a major part of describing our main character, the film is in many ways very subjective throughout. The sound is really like reflecting what is going on on the inside of David instead of just showing you how reality sounds. The opening of a film is always very important because it's the opening that establishes the language of the film. So during the title sequence of the film, when David is running down the road, we have this sound collage, this sound design sequence coming in for the first time. It's the sound of metal and especially the sound of car doors that create this rhythm. And then inside of all those sounds, we also change around the ambient sounds of the small town and the foley of David, the breath of David, is all kind of twisted into this abstract sound collage. David actually closes the door to his car. My name is David Barber and I am a re-recording mixer on The Killing of Two Lovers. I was brought in at the pre-mix stage so I hadn't been a part of the discussions between Robert and Peter and the direction of the film. The wonderful part about the experience was that it was welcome to bring in new eyes and new ears to see where we could take it sonically to help enhance the story and better portray this rift in the family. Peter made the decision early on to break the mixing up and have me handle the dialogue and the foley, and he handled the ambiences, sound effects, and design. The sound in the film is intended to kind of capture the discord and the fractures in the family and how they play out over the period of this uh, time that we get a glimpse of their story. With the use of a lot of effects like delays and echoes and more abstract elements, then it often feels like you're hearing the world through our main character's ears. By using sound instead of music, it creates this close connection to David, which is really important in the film. A great example of how we use the subjective sound in the film comes very early on in a scene in a convenience store where David meets the new boyfriend of his wife. It starts out feeling all natural with the ambiences from the store. Good morning. Would you hit me? Thanks, brother.
I get a splash of that too when you're done. Then when David's frustrations really start to come in, then the sound changes into this more abstract, noisy sound collage. Jeremy. Traditionally, in a mix, the dialogue is kept in the center channel. And there's a lot of storytelling reasons for this because in most films it's very cutty. And if you tried to pinpoint the sound source with where the person is located in the room from cut to cut to cut, it would be very jarring and disconnecting and it would take the, the viewer out of the cinematic experience. The way Robert directed this film and the way it was acted uh, was very conducive to taking some liberties with that and break that traditional norm. It also became apparent that it could be very useful in telling the story of the family and how separated they are. This is the clip that really opened up the idea of panning the dialogue in the film. We made the decision here to divide the family as they are in the story and as they also are visually. When we first cut into the scene and you hear all the voices happening, it's a little confusing as to the geography of the room, the idea of panning the dialogue really helps us open up and place voices with the characters on screen and then track with them. You can hear now the difference between the traditional method of having the dialogue all up the center and then the panning choices we made to augment the fracturing of the family. Boys? You ready? Yeah. All right, y'all be good for your sister, okay? Yeah, sure. Boys, listen to your sister. Give me a kiss. I love you. I love you. Hey, Jess. Kiss. Let's go. Y'all be good. It's been really great working on The Killing of Two Lovers. It's been a very creative, collaborative process and working with a director who's so much into sound and really wants to enhance his story and the characters through the use of sound is always so inspiring. On this film, we just kept on developing ideas until the very final day of the mix. And that kind of creative process was very inspiring to be part of. <laughs>